I hope this is working. Y'all would not believe what I had to go through to get this to work because all of a sudden things got changed and now I'm getting messages on the screen. I have no idea if, I, I think this is working. Okay, so hopefully Marianne will text me if it's not working and let me know. So I'm not here um, talking to absolutely no one. Okay, <laughs> wow. Okay, what a time for Facebook to change things. Okay, so I wanted to uh, just answer some questions that people have been asking me. Some of them are emails and I answer them and I think somebody else might have the same question. And some of them I get online and I answer them, but perhaps just one person sees them. And so I thought I'm gonna gather all the questions together and just have a chat with you guys. So that's what we're doing. So before I get into that, because I have three pages of questions and I promise we're going to get to all of these. Um, and I'll try to be brief, which is one of my biggest challenges, but I'm going to try. Um, but I did want to say, because we have now more than 10,000 people in this group, which completely blows my mind. I am so happy that this is a place that so many readers are, are connecting and having a great time talking about the kinds of books that we all love, which are, of course, low country books, beach books, uh, Beach reads, you know, that that's what we all love, or at least one of the things that we all love and have in common and we can all talk about. Um, but we started this group years ago, several years ago. Honestly, I would have to go back and check and see uh, exactly which year that happened, but it's been a few years. Um, as my reader group, it, it was folks who liked my my books and they wanted to, you know, to have a place to talk about my books and and I set this group up originally as a place to connect with readers and we could just kind of have this little private corner of Facebook where we talked about my books and I answered their questions about my characters and my settings and that kind of thing. And then because I am first and foremost a reader, have been my whole life, I love books, um, you know, we started talking about what I was reading, what they were reading, and then gradually uh, this became something that that was bigger than just about my books. It was about what we were reading. And so other people started joining who weren't familiar with my books. And then things just sort of, um, at that point, I, I changed the name to the Low Country Book Club. Originally, it was, um, I think it was the Liz Talbot Book Club initially. And so then I changed it to the Low Country Book Club. And more and more people have come in. And I know that Somewhere in this group, there are a few of you who have no idea who I am, and that's fabulous because um, I have an opportunity to introduce myself, and that's great. So I'm happy you're here, whether you've read my books or not. Um, I'm, I'm so happy that you're here. But for all of you who have read my books and have questions about one thing or another, that's why we're here. And I'm going to answer as many of them. Well, I'm going to answer all of them, um, some of them probably better than others. But anyway, okay, so... Some of these I've put stars beside because y'all ask great questions and some of these are a little hard and I wanted to move those to the end. So I'm going to start in no particular order. I'm just going to go through and, uh, and, and answer these. So Fran asks, she says, I just finished Bows of Holly, Low Country Bows of Holly. That's book 10 in the series. I love the series and Liz and Nate and all the characters. Thank you so much, Fran. I appreciate that more than I can tell you. Um, when is the next Liz Talbot book going to come out? I'm so sad I'm done with the series. Fran, you are not done with the series. I promise you there are many more Liz Talbot adventures coming. Um, I am, in fact, working on the next one, and I plan for her to have many more adventures. The good Lord willing, um, that will that will be that, that's happening. They're coming. Just please be patient with me, um, and I'll get to some of the reasons why I need your patience here in a minute. But uh, when? Oh, she, she asked when. Now, that's the hard question. I, I can't say exactly when. I don't have a release date yet. Um, this year is going to be a little tricky, um, but I will have a release date for you as soon as I have one, it will go out in my newsletter and I'll post a link, a link on this, um, on this uh, post so that you can have an easy access. I send all announcements out uh, via Facebook and of course via my newsletter. If you want to make sure you don't miss it, I'll send it there. Um, and as soon as I have a release date, I will send it in the newsletter. I'll post it on Facebook. I will, I will be screaming from the rooftops as soon as I know, but it's coming soon. So that's question one. 
Okay, so number two, Wanda wants to know, what are the pros and cons in the new location you're living versus the last one? Okay, so for those of you who don't know, my husband and I just moved to a small town in North Carolina. And some of you are probably thinking, I thought you grew up in a small town in North Carolina, and that's true. But the one we have moved back to is not exactly the same one, but it's close by. Now, we lived in South Carolina for a few years. I, I don't like talking about numbers. Nothing good ever comes from it. But we were there for a long time. South Carolina allowed me to claim them because I had lived there longer than I had lived in North Carolina. I'll say that. But, um, you know, my parents uh, needed me here and, and my family up here needed me here. So um, my husband and I made the choice to move back here. Um, the pros of that is that we're, we're close to family members that we haven't been close to in you know a long time. So we've had to drive from South Carolina to North Carolina to see the family up here for a long time. And so that's definitely a silver lining. We get to see more of them. The, the con is that, uh, and it's a big one, we left behind in Greenville and in, in, in all of South Carolina, uh, lots of friends and family. Um, and we will not be uh, abandoning them. We will be going back frequently. So instead of traveling north on 85 to visit, we're going to travel south on 85 and, and 26 and, and et cetera, et cetera, to visit. So we will be spending a lot of time in South Carolina still, but we are close to family members that we need to be close to. Um, and we will visit the ones that we can't be close to for now. So um, other than that, um, you know, the Carolinas are, are, are very similar. I love them. I've lived in one or the other of them my entire life and we're very happy where we are in a small town. Um, we, we do have, uh, I like the lot that our house is on here better. We have more room, uh, a little over an acre, not, you know, huge farm or anything, but we have a little more privacy, a little more land. And I like that, lots of trees. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, our house here is brick, which I like. Um, you know, there, there are a few things aside from family that are that are new and different and I'm happy about. So um, there, are, there are a lot of silver linings to be in here. Uh, and there are a lot of things about South Carolina that I miss, but um, I will be visiting frequently because I have to go there for uh, inspiration. Um, okay, so Hannah asks a hard question and I'm going to get to her in a minute. Claudia says, so Susan, you seem to know so much about investigation. Is that a natural talent? Some you research a lot or something you're trying to do? Well, Claudia, <laughs> I have studied this a lot. I, I'm not a trained investigator, um, but I read, I read um, The Complete Idiot's Guide to Private Investigation. Uh, I made notes, I earmarked pages. It, it's somewhere on one of these bookshelves. I have bookshelves all around me. Um, and, and I just, you know, put all kinds of sticky notes and made all, I learned a lot from that book. Then I started interviewing private investigators. One of them actually read uh, my books for a while uh, to make sure I was getting that piece of it right. Um, and, uh, you know, I started looking at things online, Googling things. I'm fairly certain I'm on every government watch list that there is for the things that I Google, but there are things related to investigating. Um, and I found some incredible things online for Liz, some nice toys for her to use. Uh, some of the gadgets that she uses are actually real and it's scary, you can buy them online, but you can. Um, and, and so that's where I, I find some of these and I, I get ideas sometimes for stories based on some of the investigative techniques that I stumble upon or the, uh, the tools that I find for her. So I'm having fun with that, but I am not a trained investigator. I have researched it. It may, it may be a little bit of a natural talent because I'm a little nosy. So that may be somewhat of a natural talent. Um, so Bobby wants to know, how did you come up with the series? They are my favorite books. Oh, Bobby, thank you so much. You are so sweet. Um, how did I come up with this idea? Honestly, all of my ideas just kind of come to me. And, and sometimes it's, a snippet of conversation that I hear. It's something that I read. Um, and 
Liz Talbot is kind of a character that has sort of always been with me. She's sort of my avatar. She's, she's like a younger version of me um, who is a private investigator because I always thought that would be cool. I, I love Nancy Drew as a child. So I read a lot of mysteries. You know, I read a lot of uh, uh, Nancy Drew, Trixie Belden. I grew up reading those things and, and others. And then as an adult, adult mysteries. And so I, I just wanted to be that investigator. So I have this, um, this, this sort of alter ego that, that is Liz Talbot. And she's just a younger version of me who is more athletic and thinner and her hair behaves better. And she's, um, you know, she's very good at her job. Uh, but she's much braver than I am. There are a lot of similarities uh, that Liz and I have and also a lot of differences. Um, but anyway, so I kind of got the idea from the character and that, that started the thing. I wanted to write about a private investigator. And then also I wanted to write about the low country of South Carolina, which I love. We lived um, east of the Cooper in um, Mount Pleasant for a while. And I just love that area so much. And that's where I first ran across the name Stella Morris on a church. Yes, I, I took that name off a church on Sullivan's Island and, and also a school. And I just loved it. It just it just struck a chord with me. And so um, the setting sort of came together for me where I wanted to write about. The characters started coming together for me. And I knew I wanted it to be a mystery. And it just sort of all melded together into the story that became Low Country Boyle. And then, you know, the characters proceeded on for, for nine more books and will for many more. That's my plan anyway. Um, okay, so uh, question number six, I don't have a person's name, but is what is your favorite part of writing the Liz Talbot series? And, and I think there are two parts that are my favorite parts. I like, you know, sort of coming up with the idea, sort of brainstorming and thinking about the idea for the story. I like finding something that excites me, just an idea. And it could be a snippet of a story that I see, um, you know, on the news or whatever. And then I take that snippet and sort of twist it. And, and you know, it might be something simple like, um, you know, a package that was misdirected, you know, or, or something like that. And then I think, okay, but what if that package that was misdirected was something really important? What if it's something someone would kill over, you know? And so then I start, and this is just an example. I have not written that story, although I might, because that does sound pretty interesting to me. But I'll, I'll think of just something, and then I, I catch, the idea sort of catches on, and then I sort of start, you know, hammering it out, and then I start outlining it, and then I figure out who did what to who and why, and then uh, how my detective is going to solve that mystery. So that, that first exciting part where I'm sort of figuring out what the story is going to be, that's probably my favorite part, but I also my, my second favorite part, I also like editing. Um, I love having, having written the first draft and then uh, going back and, and editing that second draft. That's a lot of fun for me because that's where you put in a lot of the things that you didn't really have time to get in the first time. Um, and, and other ideas come to you and you sort of flesh things out. And, and I really enjoy uh, editing that first draft. Okay, so ah, someone says, I forget, is Blake's baby a girl or a boy? Now, um, some of you may not have read this far along in the series, but at some point, uh, Blake uh, is... Um, He's, he's uh, engaged and, and then later gets married. And um, Liz knows because she's been having these dreams for a long time and because of Colleen uh, that Blake's children are, he's going to have a boy and a girl. And the boy is first and then the little girl who will be named Emma Ray is second. So the, the boy who is uh, older will be named after Blake, Franklin Blake Talbot Jr. And the little girl will be Emma Ray Talbot. Um, and we have not actually, the, the children aren't born yet, so I'm, I'm, I'm spoiling this for everyone, but sort of kind of, because everyone knows, if you've read very far in the books, that these children are coming, uh, just perhaps, you know, not that, um, yeah, all of those details, but I apologize if I've spoiled anything for anybody, that's the last thing I want to do. Um, okay, so Diana wants to know, where in the Low Country do you feel the essence of Stella Morris is best captured. Is there a place here that, in your mind, transports you to Stella Morris while you're there? Um, 
Diana, actually, there are a couple of places that do that. I love all of the South Carolina sea islands. And when I am on any of them, um, I am instantly transported to Solomaris. And the reason, one of the reasons that I created a fictional island is because none of the islands, I, I love them all, but none of them were exactly what I was looking for for a setting because I wanted a small Southern town that was very much like a modern Mayberry uh, that had all of, you know, its own police department, its own, uh, you know, grocery store, it's on this, it's on that, but was it was a little bit uh, remote from everybody else. So there's a little bit of Isle of Palms uh, in Stella Mars. There's a little bit of Dewey's Island in Stella Mars, which is the island, Dewey's Island is the next island up the coast, and it actually sits where Stella Mars sits on my map. Um, and so, so there's a lot of Dewey's in it just because it's very natural and uh, not a lot of development. Um, Isle of Palms, as I said, Sullivan's Island, which I love. Um, I love Hilton Head. I love Edisto. Um, we just came back from Jekyll Island, Georgia, so getting a little further down the coast. But um, I love all of these islands that are along the Carolina coast and, and even into Georgia. And so there are little bits and pieces of many of these islands um, in Stella Mars. So anytime I'm on any of them, I'm transported to Stella Mars. Most often, if I want to do like a, a writing retreat, if I want to escape and write and feel like I'm immersing myself into that landscape, um, I'll, I'll go to Isle of Palms and hole up in a condo, usually off season, um, somewhere in wild dunes where it's just, you know, kind of off up toward the end um, and just I'll go there and hide for a while. So that's that's my escape and walk on the beach every day. And so that that's that definitely uh evokes Selimaris to me. Um, okay, so Terry would like to know, are you continuing the list of mysteries? Enjoy the story so much. Thank you, Terry. Yes, I am. I'm going to, I'm planning many more adventures for Liz and Nate. Um, okay, so Betty has a hard question. Let me mark this. Nope. Okay, so this is not a hard question. Betty asked a hard question later on. Betty wants to know, what is the timeline process from idea to book club for your books. And um, that varies. The first book took me a long time because I was sort of teaching myself how to write a novel and then later how to actually get one published, which is pretty hard. Um, but it, that took me a long time. Um, and now uh, it generally takes me two, about two months to, uh, to write the book. And then it goes through several rounds of editing and then there's, you know, proofreading and all of that. So um, I need a good, you know, three, four months to get the whole process done. Um, and I wish I could do it faster. I'm trying to get faster. I promise I'm trying to get faster. But after I get my part done, there are, there are a lot of other parts that have to be done. So it really doesn't just depend on me and how fast I can write. If it did, I would be I would be churning these out a lot faster. But um, there are a lot of other pieces to it. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so this time of day, I'm still having iced tea in my Gigi cup. We'll do some of these later in the day when I have um, have a, a festive beverage. But for right now, it's iced tea. Okay. So Brenda wants to know if you could live anywhere in the Low Country, where would it be and why? We're looking to move and would love your opinion. Brenda, there is no bad place in the Low Country. They are all wonderful. Um, obviously for me, uh, you know, if I, could, if I could choose anywhere, I would probably live um, either on Isle of Palms or Sullivan's Island because it's closest to sort of my literary landscape. Um, you know, there are some benefits um, to us uh, to live a little closer to North Carolina. So um, we, we may at, at some point move a little further up the coast. Um, our, our plan is at some point to go coastal um, and, and live once more somewhere in that area. Um, but it, it may be a little further north. And we also like Polly's Island, Litchfield, that area very much. Uh, Jim and I actually got married in Garden City uh, at a chapel. Um, I'm, I'll try to avoid too long of a tangent here, but we went down Labor Day weekend with my parents and um, just walked into the chapel and met a minister who had a gorilla, life-size, well, a big stuffed gorilla with a fez in his uh, office. And we knew immediately we were in the right place. So he's the guy that married us. Um, and it was very no muss, no fuss. We went out to dinner at a Japanese steakhouse 
and it, it's worked out very well. I highly recommend it. It was not an expensive wedding, as you might imagine, uh, but it has worked quite well for us. So I recommend the um, the Garden City Chapel and the and the Japanese Steakhouse. Um, so, okay, next question. Um, Okay, so Jody would like to know, I always picture Isle of Palms as the influence for Stella Mars. Is it Jody? Yes, to a large degree it is. Uh, there's some other islands also that, that come into play there, but Isle of Palms is certainly a, a big influence. Um, Jennifer would like to know, do you have plans to put out a cookbook with Mama's recipes? I would love to get my hands on that chicken salad I've read so much about. Jill Hemingway agrees. So Jennifer, yes. Um, I, I, I've, get, I've gotten this question several times about a cookbook, and I would love to do that. Uh, but publishing a cookbook is a completely different thing from publishing a novel. So I think I would need um, probably a different publisher. I probably need to talk to my agent about this and see what she thinks, um, because I have gotten the question a few times. For right now, I'm sending out recipes in my newsletter, and I'll try to take a picture uh, of, you know, if I, if I know I'm going to send out a newsletter and I, I think of far enough in advance what I'm going to use. I try to cook it and take a picture and, you know, just, just put that in the newsletter. Um, but when you do it for a cookbook that you're going to publish, you have to have professional photography. And I think things are a little more complicated, but um, I will talk to my agent about that the next time I speak to her, because it's something I would like to do. And as I certainly have been asked for it quite a few times, um, it's just that right now it's, it's, I'm pretty busy um, and I want to keep the novels coming. So as soon as I can um, get my sort of get my feet under me with this move, um, I'll look into that a little further because I think it would be a very cool idea. I'd love to do it. Um, so Nina would like to know, are you moving in the same area? And I kind of touched on this a minute ago, Nina, but we moved from South Carolina to North Carolina. And um, when we lived in South Carolina, for a long time, we lived in Greenville, which is in the upstate. Before that, we lived in... Um, Mount Pleasant, which is in the Low Country, and that's when that sort of became my literary landscape. But then after a while, for family reasons and my husband's business reasons, we moved to Greenville, and we lived there for a while, and now we're back to North Carolina near where I grew up. I'm about 15 minutes from my parents now, so. And where we are is a little closer to the airport for gyms, uh, for travel, so that works out too. Um, okay, let's see. Mary would like to know, can you please list how your books are best read in order? Yes, Mary, I will, I will post this. Um, I will make a comment and post the order. Um, but Low Country Boil is the first book. And then Low Country Bombshell, Low Country Boneyard, Low Country Bordello, Low Country Book Club, Low Country Bonfire, Low Country Bookshop, Low Country Boomerang, Low Country Boondoggle, and Low Country Bows of Polly. And I will list those in comments for you. And if you happen to miss that, um, we'll make sure that you get the information. But start with Low Country Boil, um, and, and we'll get you that list in comments. Okay, um, Martha would like to know, when did you know that you wanted to be an author, and did you major in creative writing? Martha, I had so many different majors. Um, <laughs> I, I always knew that I wanted to be an author, um, but that was not something that my parents encouraged because they knew that one does not go to college and get a degree in literature and immediately graduate and have a job publishing novels uh, and, and making a living. And they were not interested in me living in their house for another 10 years while I got my first novel published. So they encouraged me to, as my mother likes to say, get my mind on something sensible. So I did. Um, I, I learned to program computers. I, I, I majored in um, computer business systems. And uh, that was maybe my fourth major. I, I changed several times and got a fabulous job offer before I had actually complete, completed that degree. So I went off and I thought, I'll finish later. And then years later, when we were living in, um, in uh, Mount Pleasant, I went back to College Charleston. And at that point, I did take English courses because I knew that as much as I loved pro programming computers, and I do, I, I loved that part of my job, but um, I really just needed to write novels and I wanted to do that so badly. And so while we were there, I went back to College Charleston. I took primarily English courses and worked on that. And then the first opportunity I got after that, um, I, I stopped everything else and uh, well, the company I was working for went out of business and I had the opportunity 
uh, to, to write, and my husband encouraged me to do that. So I did, and I have not looked back. But no, I did not actually major in English. Well, it was one of many majors that I had. Um, so Lee would like to know, I hope you're busy writing. I love all your books. Oh, thank you, Lee. And don't want them to run out reading Boondoggle now. Lee, I'm trying to, I'm writing as fast as I can. I'm trying to get this next one to you as quickly as I can. And I promise you there will be many more. I hope that you will not run out. Uh, you may have to wait on me a little while and I'm sorry, but I'm, I wish that I could write as fast as y'all can read. I mean, how great would that be? Um, but it's going to take me a little while, but I am working on it. I promise. So Becky, oh, here's the hard question. I'm going to make a note by Becky and we'll come back to that. Um, so Maureen wants to know, I think you should publish a Talbot family cookbook with those delicious recipes. And Maureen, we talked about that and um, I'm working on it. We'll, I, will, I will get back to y'all and let you know what my agent says about that. Valerie would like to know, do you have a set amount of books in mind for the series or will Liz's stories keep going for as long as her character speaks to you? Valerie, that is my plan for Liz's stories to keep going for as long as her character speaks to me. And that should be a very long time because as I have mentioned a time or two, she's my avatar. So Liz Talbot is this younger version of me who's a private investigator. Now, I've never done that. We, we covered that. But um, there's a lot of her in me. Uh, and I may get to the point where I, I want to write something else. I do have some other things in mind. I have a women's fiction project in mind that I'm eager to write, um, but I don't have any plans to stop writing the Liz Talbot Mysteries. Not anytime soon. Um, what can we expect to see from Liz in the future? Uh, Valerie also asked that question. So the next book is called Low Country Lies, and I'm working on it right now. And I can't tell you anything else about it because I, I'm bad about this. I don't like to talk about an idea until I get until I get it all down because it sort of takes the energy out of it for me. So I don't really talk about what I'm writing while I'm writing it. Um, but I will give you more details soon, I promise. Okay, so Claudia wants to know, have you spent most of your life in the low country? I love your Southern characters. Liz's mom and dad are hoots. Thank you so much, Claudia. Um, the answer to that is no. I have not spent nearly as much of my life as I would have liked in the Low Country. We did live there for a while, and now I go on writing retreats there uh, occasionally, and we'll go down for vacation. I'll go and spend you know a couple weeks if, if I'm on a retreat. I try to stay you know longer, but sometimes we'll go down for a week or two. Um, the longest I've stayed recently is maybe six weeks. Um, but I go as often as I can, and at some point we, we will probably move back to that area. That's our plan. Um, but I love it, and so I write about it. I write about the things that I love. Family, good southern food, mysteries, the low country, beaches, all of that. Um, I, I write about what I love. So, um, Claudia also says, in several low country books, I encounter Gullah and Geechee Colors is where your Liz books set a little removed from these places. I think Solomars is a fictional island or maybe just a little more refined. Um, Claudia, um, actually um, my books are set right in the middle of the area where there is a lot of Gullah and Geechee culture. I do not go into that, um, or at least I haven't so far. Uh, not very much. I mean, there's 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 just a tiny mention of a thing or two in a couple of books. I don't. I, I haven't done that thus far because it's not something that I know a terrible terrible lot about. Uh, but it's something that I'm very interested in, and it is certainly true to the area uh, and a large part of the area. So I think that's something that probably I will um, spend some more time delving into, and and maybe we'll we'll put in future books a little bit, but. Um, you know, it's something that I want to do right. Uh, it's something that I want to give a lot of time to and make sure that I get that part right. Um, and, I, you know, up until this point, the stories that I've written have not necessarily had that component in them. Um, but I have a lot more stories to tell, so we, we may get there. So Janet wants to know, I've been reading the Liz Talbot Mysteries and want to know if Liz or Colleen are based on real life people. Liz um, is, is a figment of my imagination who is my avatar. She has a lot of me in her. To some degree, her personality is kind of based on me just because um, she's just this 
this person that I, I think it would be cool to be. I think it would be cool to be a private investigator. But she and I have a lot of things in common, as I mentioned. Um, we both grew up in small southern towns in the Carolinas. We both have uh, some quirky family members. Um, we both have a love of good southern food, uh, of mysteries and puzzles and, and all sorts of things like that. So um, we have a lot of things in common. So to some degree, Liz is based on me, but um, I will tell you, I have never jumped from a running jet ski into a running boat while someone was shooting at me. Um, and I do not carry a gun in my handbag. So there are a lot of differences. I've never been a private investigator, um, although I think it would be an awful lot of fun. So that's why I write about it. Um, Colleen is not based on anybody real. I'll tell you how Colleen came to be. Um, she was actually not in the first few drafts of Low Country Boil, the first book in the series. Um, but I was sort of daydreaming one day about Liz and her overdeveloped sense of responsibility, sort of what makes Liz that way. And, um, you know, I was thinking about it, mulling it over, and I thought something tragic happened when she was young once to one of her friends, and she feels responsible. She wasn't responsible, but she feels responsible. And so I, I, I wrote Colleen's story for myself. I've never published it anywhere. Uh, Colleen uh, committed suicide when they were 17 and they were best friends. And Liz feels responsible because she was out on a date with her boyfriend and she feels like she wasn't there for her friend. Um, and so she always has felt guilty about this. And, and I'm thinking that this haunts her. And as I'm having this thought, the word haunt starts flashing on and off in red in my brain. And I'm thinking, this is Charleston. We can have ghosts. And so I, I went back and I wrote Colleen into the story and I loved it so much that uh, at that point, you know, Colleen was so much a part of the story. I never dreamed of taking her out after that, but she isn't based on any real character um, or, or, or a real spirit. Um, I wish she was, and that would be kind of cool, but um, I don't actually have my own Colleen, although I think that would be quite handy. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to the two hard questions because I've gotten the easy ones taken care of. So um, Hannah asked, um, where do I even start writing a Southern fiction novel? Wow. Um, and and she, she says, your career is so inspiring to me. Thank you, Hannah. Um, also, your social media strategy. You have the best post pictures questions every single day. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I try. Social media is not something that came natural to me. It's something that I, I work hard to try to do right. Um, and and now I, I enjoy it, but it's just not a, a thing that came natural to me. So that's one of the things I work a little harder on. Um, where do I even start writing a Southern fiction novel? Well, um, you know, <laughs> that's a good question, Hannah. And, and I think, you know, you, you have to have a story. You have to... Um, and that someone said this once to me in a class and, and, and it kind of stuck with me in order to make rhinoceros soup, you have to have a rhinoceros. That's not an original thing. I didn't say it. He didn't either, but he repeated it. And, and I think it's very true. So um, you, you have to start with an idea for a story that that's based um, in the South. And for me, writing about, you know, writing Southern fiction is sort of second nature because I've never lived anywhere else. Um, and anything that I write is just by definition going to be Southern because my background is Southern. I've only lived in the Carolinas and, and that's just who I am. So it's sort of a, a product of, of, you know, my, my collective experience, I guess, over the course of years. Um, and I think if you want to write a Southern story, um, definitely spending time in the area. I'm not sure, honestly, where you're from, but um, spending time in the area would, would definitely be a plus. That would be something you'd want to do. And then um, you just, you, you have to have that story idea. And no matter where it's set, um, you know, stories are Southern because of, of where they are and, and the characters that are involved. Um, but stories happen everywhere. So um, if you have an idea for a story, uh, then you can certainly set it in the South. Um, but you, you know, if you're not from the South, obviously you, you want to spend some time in the location that you're planning to set the book and, and make sure that you research it thoroughly. And, and uh, that would be my best suggestion. Um, but first you got to have the story idea. Um, you know, who are the characters? I, I, I start with the characters. Who are the characters? What happened to them? Um, and then what makes this a Southern story? 
Um, and that's a product of, of the area that it's set and, and the people that live there and their customs and so many hundreds of things. Um, but that, that's a good question uh, and, and it's not an easy one to answer. So the other hard question that I have here is from Becky and she says, what was the process of getting your first book published? How did you land your agent? Would you share your query letters? So um, it took me a while to write that first book because I didn't know what I was doing. I'd read so many books um, and I thought I knew what I was doing when I started, but um, you know, I had to sort of work at it. I did quite a few drafts and then I went to a critique group and I started reading a few pages and aloud and people would comment on them and they would read their pages and we would all comment and so, so having critique partners helps your work, not just because they critique your work, but because critiquing their work makes your work stronger. So um, I think that's part of a good, uh, that's a good second step for anyone who's interested, um, you know, start writing and then start, you know, trading pages and, and have a critique partner or critique group. Um, there are some organizations that offer that kind of thing, or maybe if you have a friend who's also interested, uh, trade pages and, and read. Um, and, and help each other with your story, and that, that helps. Um, and then after you get to a certain point and you've edited and you've polished and you've edited and you've polished, then you're ready to query. Um, the tool that I used was querytracker.com, and it, it just helps you organize querying agents. Um, the agent that I have now is not the agent that I had uh, when I first started. Um, my journey is typical in that it was somewhat rocky, um, but not typical in, in the way that it happened. Uh, the first agent that I had, the first agent that I signed with, um, before she could start uh, querying my book to editors, uh, became ill and uh, went on an extended leave, and I got moved to a different agent in that agency, and he primarily worked with editors who um, were in uh, fantasy and science fiction and something that that I was not, you know, it wasn't my, my genre at all. So um, after a while, um, I settled at a small publisher, uh, Henry Press. That's my first 10 books were at Henry Press. And um, that agent and I, after a while, uh, parted ways. And um, I was with uh, Stephanie Evans, uh, who at the time was with Fine Print for a while and um, am now uh, with, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say her name wrong. I love Christina, Christina Hoverbra at uh, Jane Rock Rosen Agency, and she's fabulous, and I did not get her the typical way. Uh, it was sort of through um, uh, different connections that, that we had, and uh, she actually emailed me one day, and, and we then we met at a conference and we, we talked and we, I, I, she's great. She's fabulous. Um, but I, I did not get her, the, I guess, the traditional way. But I would recommend you start with Query Tracker. Uh, if you have a, a novel that you're ready to shop to agents, uh, that's an excellent tool and it helps you to organize everything. Um, and if uh, she asked, would I share my query letter? Becky, I will email you one that I used, uh, the one that I think is, is mo was successful to some degree. Um, it's not something I think I want to post online, but I'm happy to email it to you. If anyone else wants to see it, I'll do that. But um, I have to say that most agents have very particular requirements or very specific requirements. There are things that they want to see. So what worked for one agent might not be something that would work for a different agent. Um, often I would tailor these based on who I was querying. Um, I read would read their requirements. And, and that's something you wanna do uh, when you're coming up with your list of uh, agents that you want to send your queries to, make sure that you read their requirements and just send them what they ask for. Um, and I think that's the best piece of advice I can give you. Use Query Tracker and then just send each agent what they're asking for. But um, I will email you uh, an example of, of one of the queries that I used. Okay, so that is all the questions that I have for today. Uh, I'm thinking I might make this a regular feature if you guys like it. Um, and if you have more questions for me, we'll put up a post that you can put questions on. And then after a while, when we have a few, um, I'll hop on and do this. Um, this time it took me longer than I planned. I had the idea in, I think, February or maybe even January. And then we moved. And uh, any of you who have ever moved know how life upending that can be. So that's that's what happened there. So this took a lot longer than I had planned. So 
I am all out of questions for today. If you have more, please post them, send them to me, and I will hop on and answer them. This has been a lot of fun. I can't see you guys, so that's kind of um, interesting. Um, but I hope that um, I hope this has been fun for you. It's been fun for me. All right, you guys have a good evening, and I will talk to you again soon. Y'all take care.